Hey everyone, glad to catch up with you again today. Pastor Scott here with the Connect video for today, which is October 30th. Almost done with the month of October, two months left of this year, and we're almost in to the holidays. Here's a couple things to be aware of for this coming weekend before we get into today's devotional. We're going to be doing communion in both services this weekend. So if you're joining us on campus, you can pick up your communion packet on a table in the back of the sanctuary as you head in. And if you're joining us online, we just want to remind you to get your elements ready so when you're joining us in the online service, you, you don't have to scramble and you can participate with communion there as well. This weekend, we're having the annual business meeting, and this meeting is going to be a vote-only meeting for the proposed 2021 budget and the officers that are being nominated for leadership positions in 2021. This meeting will take place between the first and second service. The goal is to have it start at 1045. But in order for that to happen, we need your help as well. Since this is a, a, a meeting that requires a vote, you need to get a ballot, but to get a ballot, you have to sign in. It's kind of a process there. So there's going to be four sign-up tables located outside of the sanctuary lobby, and there'll be staff starting at about 1025. Uh, each of these tables will have, uh, there'll be different last names, so each table will have different last names assigned to it. So you need to find the table that your last name begins with, and you can pick up your ballot there and sign in there. Um, once we, we get all that taken care of, we'd like to get the meeting started at about 1045, and you can only drop off your ballot in the meeting. So you can go out there when you get, like I said, the, those tables open at about 1025. You can sign in, get your ballot, and then hang out until the meeting starts at about 1045. And this is a vote only meeting. We hope to, to see you there, members. We have another welcome class coming up next week on November 4th. And the welcome class is taught by Pastor Steve. And it gives you a kind of an in-depth history on the mission, the vision, the history of the church, what our expectations are of people who come to our, this church and, and even want to become members. This serves as a membership class. So if you'd like to participate in this, please contact the office soon so we can make sure we have a spot and materials ready for you. As I as mentioning membership, we're going to be welcoming new members on November 15th, so a couple Sundays from now. If you'd like to become a member or if you'd like to learn more about what it means to be a member, be sure to contact the office and get signed up for that welcome class. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday, we're going to have our next baptism celebration service. Baptism is just an awesome, awesome time to, to see people who have put their faith in Jesus and, and are making that public, pro public profession of their faith. If you would like to, to be involved with it, it's not too late. However, we do ask that you respond by November 1st, which is this coming Sunday, so we can make sure all the preparations are in place. So if you'd like to do that, be sure to contact the office. Um, Pastor Steve always tells us at the end of each service that we are blessed and we need to be a blessing to those around us. And there's two ways for you to be involved and be blessings to those uh, around you in the community of Tucson and, and, and in the world globally here in, in the coming weeks. Right now, Operation Christmas Child is going on, and this is put on by Samaritan's Purse. Uh, this is a global effort to, to make sure kids around the world uh, have Christmas and, and Christmas presents, but not only that, like the gospel is presented and, and put into their hands. We, will ha we have a table in the lobby where you can um, stop and get more information or pick up a box and just talk to a representative of, of the people who are running this at the church so you can ask any questions. We do need them back by November 15th. And the second thing that you can be involved with, we're, we're doing a toy drive for Youth Haven Ranch. And a Youth Haven Ranch uh, is accepting toys for those aged between 7 and 13. And uh, this will be going on for the whole month of, of November, from November 1st through the 29th. And there's going to be a collection of uh, baskets both in both lobbies, the upper lobby and the sanctuary, and down in the lower lobby by the office. So if you're able to participate in that, it would be awesome, and we just want to thank you for that. Shifting into a thought for today, it's been a wild fall, right, as we've seen political parties and, and all the, the stuff that the media has been talking about. And, and, and it seems like there's a lot of differences between both sides and whatever side you find yourself on. And, and you really can't coexist with the other side. There's just been a lot of vitriol and, and just a lot of negative negativity that, that's been coming out of that. And there next week is election day and and who knows when it'll all be counted but at some point the dust will settle and we'll have a new leader how do we re re respond inside of this what should we as as believers be be thinking about how should we be looking 
to respond to those that and, and just minister to and, and how do we act around everyone no matter what side of the aisle they find themselves on and I was pondering this today I really was drawn back to the the story of the parable of the good Samaritan and uh, it's a pretty well-known passage but I, I really think it, it speaks to us here so uh, there was in this is found in, in Luke 10 the there was a scribe, a Pharisee, who was trying to test Jesus and, and, and trip him up. And, and he asked him, you know, who's, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus tells him, you know, love the Lord your God with all your soul, heart, soul, and mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And then to try and trip Jesus up, he's like, who's your neighbor? So Jesus tells this, this parable to illustrate what it looks like to, to love your neighbor. And so it starts off there in approximately verse 30. And uh, the, Jesus tells this parable. And so there's a guy traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And as he goes down, he gets beat, he gets robbed, and then he gets left for dead, which was pretty common on, on some of those roads back then. It was pretty common on this road, is, is my understanding. And so everyone could have identified with this story. And as other people are traveling this highway, first a, a priest came along, uh, somebody who clearly understood the, the commands of Scripture and, and understood that God's heartbeat was to love those and to show compassion for those who were in need. And the priest couldn't be bothered to help. A Levite comes along, and he was another person who should have understood what God's, God asks and, and for us, for that, that culture, and even now for us, to, to, to what he should have done. And instead of stopping and helping the dude, he goes and he walks on the other side of the road, kind of like, you can't see you. No, no, don't stop looking away, looking away. And does nothing. And then along comes a Samaritan. And for us, we're like, oh, Samaritan, that's cool. Um, but it was, it was so much more than that. And it picks up in verse 33, where Jesus says, but a Samaritan on his journey came up to him, and when he saw the man, he had compassion. Now, there was a lot at stake for this Samaritan here. You know, uh, the Jews did not get along with the Samaritans. In fact, they despised them. They looked down on them as half breeds. There, there was no love from the Jews towards the Samaritans. In fact, when they were traveling between Jerusalem and and Samar and going up to the northern regions of Galilee, and Samar Samaria was in the middle, the Jews would actually go around. They despise the Samaritans so much. And yet, here you have this Samaritan who knows there's a Jew lying on the ground, and, and it was his natural enemy. And, and Jesus says, when he saw the man, he had, he had compassion. Now, compassion wasn't just that he felt bad for the guy. Oh, I'm sorry that you got hurt. But compassion in the biblical sense means he saw something he felt it, and he was going to do something about it. And in verse 34, we read, He, the Samaritan, went over to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on olive oil and wine. Then he put the man on his animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. That was a significant investment for a guy who didn't like him. I mean, he bandaged his wounds. He gives him first aid. He, he takes care of him. And then he, he could have just, well, you stopped the bleeding bud and, and left him. But instead, no, he, he puts him on his donkey or his animal and he, he carries him down to, to an inn. And there weren't inns like we have back then or now. They're, they're quite different back then. But he, he drops him off and, and he stays the night and, and makes sure that he, this guy is beginning to heal. He'd done quite a bit. He was super generous to a guy that hated him and probably wouldn't have done the same thing for him. But then as you read in verse 35, it says, The next day he took out two denarii and, and he gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra expenses or for whatever extra you spend. Uh, he's beyond generous. Like he's this, He knows that this guy can't just leave and walk away. So he's going to be here for at least another day or two recovering. Who knows how much longer. And so this Samaritan gets out two more denarii. Now, maybe you're like a denarii. What is that? Uh, a denarii was equal to one day's wage. So he says, here's two days full of wages. This is significant money. He's being generous. His compassion motivates him and he is being generous. And he says, 
I'm going to come back some while in the future, and if there's more expenses, then I'll pay those as well. For this guy who hated him, he went the extra mile to show him compassion and to be a good neighbor and to show him love, the selfless love that God shows to us. So as this, this story draws to a close, um, Jesus asks the question back to the guy who was trying to trip him up in verse 36. He says, which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell on the, into the hands of the robber? And the scribe responds, the one who showed mercy, he said. So Jesus tells him, go and do the same. So no matter who wins on Tuesday, uh, we have a charge. We're told to love our neighbors as ourselves. And it doesn't really matter in the sense of like, does that person actually live next to you or not? Complete, absolute stranger. And yet he showed grace and compassion and love and mercy to this guy. So as we try to figure out um, how to navigate all the stuff that's going around with us with the, the election and all that in the next few weeks and, and um, just the whatever it comes down the pipeline. Let our response be one that is motivated by grace and compassion and love for all of those that we come in contact with. As Pastor Steve always says, we are blessed. So be a blessing to those around us. Take care.